Welcome everybody to this month's version of our project tutorial. Our project this month is an edge lit sign. It's an LED sign. Um, can be used as a gift, as a night light, as a desk ornament, whatever. And you can make it personalized. You can make it anything you want. So this is how I created the acrylic part of this particular project. So we open a new file. We're going to do an 8x8 acrylic sheet. It's uh, 0.22 inches thick. We're going to do on the material surface. Our datum position is going to be in the middle. Okay, in the center. Um, and everything else is pretty and it's single sided. So we have this here like this. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You could sit there and hand draw whatever you want to draw with figures or whatever. But I chose to cheat a little bit. Um, I went out and went on the internet and got myself an EPS file of Santa Claus in the chimney. So I'm going to import him. And here's my Santa Claus in the chimney. Now, sometimes when you import some of these files, uh, the vector graphics on them uh, can be pretty intense. So what you may want to do is um, look at how many nodes are in it. And as you can see here, that there's a, a bazillion nodes here. Well, you come over here to this curve fit icon and click on it. And what it's going to allow you to do is make this either into straight lines, busier curves, or a circular arc. I usually go for bezier curves, especially if they, they're not really straight. Even though it's a block, it's not really a straight block. Uh, I leave the tolerance for whatever they've got it. And um, I preview it to see how much difference there's going to be. And quite honestly, it's just about the same thing. So, what I can do is you could either exit back out and then say replace the se selected vector and what it will do is automatically se select it when you preview it and it got rid of the old one and it left the new one and you notice how many less nodes there is the less nodes there is the faster it's going to actually um, render and it, a lot of the times it picks up your uh, processing speed too for the cutting of it and the reason for that is is that it basically says I'm going to go from here to here and it's either an arc, a straight line, or whatever. So that's one way you can clean these things up. So, <clears throat> if you're happy with the cleanup on it, which I'm pretty happy with uh, Santa and going into the chimney and stuff here. So, now, the slot in my base is 7 inches. So what I would do on this particular one is, is that I might scale him down just a little bit more. Um, well, no, maybe not. I'll just leave him there like that. But I still have to put a base in here. And my bases, like I said, are 7 inches the wide. And I usually make them about a half inch tall. So I, I can set here and put 0.5 is my Y height. And I can put 7 is my width. And say apply. Now another thing you really want to kind of pay attention to on this, especially if you're going to try to make things uh, aesthetically right, I'm going to put Mr. Santa Claus here in the middle. Okay, see how it shifted it over? Now when I put my base over, everything is symmetrical with the base. And I don't have to worry about it kind of looking lopsided or something like that. So. I've got my base done and this is going to be the base now I don't want this thing just to have this big wide base it kind of makes it look kind of clunky so since this is an outside parameter on this whole thing what I'm going to do is use that to my advantage now if it didn't have that you could go around here and draw a line around and make your outside parameter but I kind of like this one the way it is but what I'm going to do and the reason I'm doing this is, for instance, for the light to get from here 
up to this hand and really illuminate this hand correctly it's got to go like this well light doesn't really go around corners it goes in straight lines so it would be any light got over here this part here might not be illuminated very well so what I'm gonna do is since I do have the width available to me I would just basically take and draw a line from about here to here and kind of give it a graceful curve okay and you could do it one of two things I could set there since I have this on the center line I could click on that and say I want to flip that horizontally and create a mirrored one see it puts it over here now all I have to do is extend this line okay all I have to do is extend this line so I can go into nodes take this line and bring it right up to here okay now my two sides are pretty symmetrical okay now what I can do is come in here cut this away cut this away and look at cut it away here cut this away cut this away cut this away now I can come over to here cut here and it comes all the way here now this is all one continuous line around that looks pretty cool that looks pretty cool now if I wanted to put some kind of saying underneath this or something I would have made him a little bit smaller so I could have more space underneath it or whatever or we could just in the space available just put something like ho ho okay and you know we can use anything that you want <clears throat> as far as the script goes I like true time to font which is fine I can go ho ho and then just sit there and say close and now I can put this guy anywhere I want it and I can rotate it or whatever okay let's say I like that one there but I want to mirror this over to the other side I can do that I can flip it horizontally and what else can I do I could set there turn it around so I got ho ho on it okay I'm satisfied with that now what do we do we're all okay here so what's the next thing we want to do well we got to come up with some tool paths I'm happy with the way everything looks so I need some tool paths now I have found that using the quick engrave seems to work pretty good okay I put it at one one thousandth of an inch and I can do outline or fill whatever I want and I select a 90 60 degree V bit okay um, pass depth I put the pass depth well let's put it okay now I can go into edit and change the path depth for this particular function and I'm gonna put it really low and the reason being is I want this I want this number here to get a couple passes so if I say okay what it's going to do is it's going to have to take two passes to get to there which I have found works out pretty good then I calculate then I you know got to line everything that I want and I can calculate it okay the other thing that I also do 
is I always do this outside line too. And the reason for it is it makes it when I cut it out a lot cleaner. So I will calculate everybody. Say closed. There's my quick engrave. Now if I look at it here, make my globe color, uh, toolpath color so you can actually see it. I can and you notice it comes out to where it's really hard to see. It's because I'm only going down a thousandth of an inch. Believe me, it will come out okay, even though you can hardly see it here. Okay. Now, let's suppose I want to add a little bit more dimension to this guy. Another thing I can do is, is I can go into Quick Engrave again and highlight all the brick. Okay, and unhighlight these mortar, mortar joints here. Highlight all the brick, and now I can go in and fill them with a hatch. And I don't care. I'm going to make it uh, two one hundredths of an inch for the hatch. Calculate it. These are two open vectors, so if I want them to become with hatch on them, I'm going to have to close them in, which means I have to work this part right here, which is fine, and we can do that, but I'm not going to work dork with it right now. And let's say I want these guys also to be like that. Calculate them, and now they will be. So when I look at them, now they're going to be filled in. It's going to give it some texture. Okay. Now, like I said, on this one here, I, to get the other bricks done, I'm going to have to go in and close these in. And you can do this one of two ways. We can make these a whole bunch of broken lines, or I can just sit there and go in here and take my tool here, get to the corner, come somewhere along here, somewhere along here, hook up to the corner here, and then join these two together. Okay. Still saying it's an open one. I'm not too sure where that is at. Probably right here. This is probably where my open is at. Okay. Close it up. And I should be able to use that now and use it as a calculator. And it did. It closed it up. So, I'm all set to go. And all I got to do is that to the other ones. So, I've got that toolpath saved. Okay. If I go in and click all the other blocks, tell it to calculate. It's going to tell me I got open ones. I already knew that. And as you can see, it fills them in. So, I'm done with that. Now, what do I do? Is I save these files um, 
make sure you have the correct post processor save the toolpath and it's going to go to your file say save then go to the other one make sure you've got the correct path save it that's your other engraving file the last file that we got a dork with is the profile to cut it out come up here go to profile um, we're going to use an eighth inch in mill say okay um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Want to go down 0.23 because we got a 0.22 thick piece of plastic. We want to be on the outside. Go ahead and calculate it. It's going to say maximum tool depth, blah, blah, blah. We know that. And now it's going to, if I preview that step, it's going to cut it out. I usually don't put um, tabs on it because tabs are really hard to sand off this plastic. What I'll do is either uh, double stick it down so it doesn't go anywhere or uh, what I've been doing is using a vacuum hold down. So that seems to work pretty decent. Now this is my acrylic all done. Save the program, save the file. We'll save the file. And we will call this Santa in chimney. And save it. And it's ready for the next time. I also put what they are in my tool path so when I go to do them I know what my tool paths are okay and that's what we got for doing the okay now that we're done with the acrylic we are ready to go on and do the base and I'm just gonna go and load the base file itself and the reason being to save me a little time here. So I have that base file in my signs. It's under base. Here's my file. And here's the base, okay? The base, quite honestly, is no more it's no more than a big rectangle. Okay? And that's how I ended up originally making it, is um, I made two boxes for the outline. It's in green here, one box here and one box here for the basic outline of it. And then I took that in this side here, this side here, this side here, this side here is what we cut with a 90 degree V groove bit. Well, we don't cut all the way through. What we do is cut partially way through. And what that does is allow us to be able to fold the box together like a piece of cardboard. And then we cut grooves for to put the bottom in. And we cut the slot in for the, the plexiglass or the acrylic glass. And then the holes are for the I and the 12 volt plug and then finally the final outline. So over here I have the V groove path, the pocket path, the side rot rabbits, the counter bore for one of the holes, the two holes and then the profile. So if we look at all of this and preview it
this is what you end up with. Okay? So we'll put glue in this area here, in this area here, this area here, and fold it all together just like a box with tape. And if you want to see that procedure, go to the video and you can see it. The assembly and finishing video. Well, that's all I have on the designing of this project for this month. Um, my name is Rick Frazier. It's been my pleasure to be here with you. Um, I hope you watch the next video, which is on the machining, and the two vi videos following that, which are on assembly and finishing. So, see you when we come back. So, see you when we come back.